Hey, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well, and welcome back, welcome back, welcome to today's video. I said welcome back, don't need to say it twice. Welcome to today's video, which is, of course, a Chelsea news video, where I'll be talking about three things. The first being, as per The Athletic, Olivier Giroud wants a new contract at Chelsea. Well, not like Willian demanding a new contract, he wants to look at the opportunity of getting a 12-month extension, which Chelsea do offer to players over 30 years old, which is interesting for a few reasons and I want to talk about that. Posing the question for, I don't know, future speculations, should Billy Gilmore be starting over Jorginho? Jorginho is a fan favourite and much kind of a leader on the pitch but in terms of skill set and player attributes, Billy Gilmore looks like he may offer more than Jorginho. Just posing the question. And finally, Chelsea have identified a Kepa replacement, so saith Turkish reports. But is he going to really be a replacement or a second keeper to replace Caballero that could push Kepa? Hmm. Lots of interesting stuff to get into, but before we get into that, a quick reminder to you guys just to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not already done so, please do subscribe. Hit the bell notifications icon because that's important. If you want to help me out, feel free to like the video and you're welcome to follow me on the socials such as Instagram. All right then, let's get into it. So let's start on Olivier Giroud, the big Frenchman. Um, hasn't scored of late, but has put in a couple of good performances in terms of running around, helping the team link up, being good defensively, general industry, etc. Come in a good time considering the absence of leading goal scorer and first choice number nine, Tammy Abraham. Now, The Athletic published an article on how Giroud apparently wants a 12 month extension. Which is interesting. In January, Giroud had the pick of a couple of clubs, big clubs in Europe to go to, and he would have got like a three and a half year contract or something, or two, at least two and a half year contract. Hell, maybe three year contracts. Superb long deals at the highest level in football for Giroud. But it looks like he's angling for a mere 12 months at Chelsea Football Club. Firstly, it's kind of nice to hear, right? And I'll tell you why, because he obviously loves London, and I think Giroud loves Chelsea. He loved winning the FA Cup, he absolutely loved winning the Europa League, and bearing in mind that was against Arsenal, remember, so no love lost there apparently. I'm sure he does respect his time there, of course, because he spent a lot of time there and it was, you know, the majority of his career in English football, but I think he does love Chelsea and he wants to stay, and he wants to stay in this project. He's been incredibly... Um, well, he's been a model professional throughout this difficult time when he's been sitting on the bench, and he's displayed and demonstrated a superb professional attitude and a good work ethic and it's nice to hear from a Chelsea fan's perspective that he wants to remain at Stamford Bridge even if only for 12 months. Obviously his family's in London and that would suit his home life but it's just really nice to hear I think personally. Also from his perspective this may eliminate the chance of getting a long-term contract at one of Europeans elite clubs but he always talked about MLS maybe so maybe he sees one more season at the highest level, maybe then, I don't know, a two-year contract in Europe, maybe not, maybe he just jumps straight to MLS, but still, big up Giroud. And in terms of what I think, if Chelsea are, say, to sell Michy Batshuayi and buy another striker regardless, then maybe he can stay, I don't know, do Chelsea even get a striker if Tammy picks up scoring again, if Giroud scores a few goals, if they get a high-scoring winger and all the, you know, injury injured players come back, including Loftus-Cheek, that's good for a goal in midfield. Did Chelsea definitely buy number nine? I'm not so sure anymore. Still, we'll have to see what happens. I think a lot of Chelsea fans will be happy for Giroud to stay. Right, moving on to the next story, and we'll save the goalkeeper for last. So let's talk about Billy Gilmore. Ever since his superb performance against Liverpool, the world media, in terms of football media, are talking about him. Now, Chelsea fans have long known about Billy Gilmore, and when they've seen him on the pitch, they're like, wow, this guy can pick a pass. But this performance against Liverpool shows so much more. We knew he could recycle possession very, very quickly. We know his passing ability is very, very good. But he had shades of prime Ethan Ampadu in this game. He gets stuck in and he can occupy the Jorginho space, play like him, but it shows that he's very, very good at sticking a leg in and getting in a tackle. And not only that, that recovery he made against Liverpool when he basically scooped the ball up, swept it away just in front of Chelsea's goal, that's not something you see Jorginho do. So people are starting to rub their chins in a pondering fashion, thinking, wow, if he can keep this up, should he, should he be starting there? Now, Jorginho is a important player to Frank Lampard, and obviously he made him Frank, Frank? <laughs> He made him Frank captain. <laughs> I like that. Jorginho, you are Frank captain. Azpilicueta is club captain, but you're Frank captain. 
I don't know what was happening to me. He made him vice captain as soon as he came into the club, pretty much. So he obviously values his leadership very, very highly. And that comes at a premium these days. So I think losing him on the pitch and putting in Billy Gilmore, as skillful as he is, he obviously doesn't have any leadership qualities. He gets stuck in, but purely because of his age, maybe he even if he gets imposing in terms of tackling he's not commanding people around the pitch and why should he at this point sort of thing so I'm not so sure, but in terms of player attributes, skill set, if you're comparing Jorginho's natural abilities and you're comparing Billy Gilmore's natural abilities in terms of his skill ceiling, I think Gilmore could be something special. And if he's showing that he can fit in the first team immediately and have no issue playing in that starting 11, maybe sooner rather than later, he can make that spot his own. That's a very interesting talking point indeed, if you ask me. Right, let's talk about the goalkeeping situation. Obviously, Keppel was benched due to form he was brought back in for this cup game he played really well it's speculated now that he's won his first team place back now i want to cite to you this article published by the chelsea chronicle talking about turkish goalkeeper um agurkan kakir agurkan kakir I'm going to call him Kakir. The article goes a little something like this. Chelsea are reportedly keen on bringing in Trabzonspor goalkeeper Kakir to Stamford Bridge as a replacement for Kepa Aritha Balaga. Turkish outlet Fotospor claims Liverpool have been showing interest signing this goalkeeper with Chelsea entering the scene after Trab... Trabzonspor... Trabzonspor? Trabzonspor? Faced Fenerbahce in the Turkish Cup. The report also said Chelsea have consistently been receiving information about the 23-year-old from former player and assistant coach manager Eddie Newton, who is now at the Turkish club. Trubs on Spore, President Ahmet Agoglu, Jesus, why, why are they all difficult things to say? Has made a reference to the goalkeeper valuation. Ah, this is interesting. He said, in my opinion, Kakir is one of the three best goalkeepers in Europe and a huge prospect for Turkish football. We want 20 to 25 million euros and it could be as high as 30 million euros. But of course, we also hope he stays. First up, it's not a surprise that the president of the club is saying, yeah, he's got to be one of the top three in the world, mate. You know what I mean? We'll sell him for loads of money. But if he says he wants 25 million euros for him, that's like 20 million pounds. That's not that much for a goalkeeper. You know, you could pay that for a second goalkeeper, really. One that could push the first goalkeeper in Kepa Rida Balaga. And I think Liverpool were looking at him probably as a potential replacement for Adrian, but he probably would look at Liverpool and Chelsea and think, you know what, I've got more of a chance of actually muscling my way forward in front of the queue at Chelsea, comparing Alisson to Kepper at the moment, I might go to Chelsea. Plus, why wouldn't you want to live in South West London, right? Hey, hey. The article goes on and gets rather depressing at this point. Compared to the record-breaking £72 million Chelsea spent to sign Kepper in 2018, Kakir can provide the competition for the role between the sticks, brackets, if Chelsea decide to keep Kepper. For a fairly cheap price in today's market, like I said, £20 million would be very cheap. Kepper had recently fallen down the pecking order at Chelsea with Willy Caballero taking the number one spot in six consecutive games prior to Kepper's heroics at Chelsea's FA Cup victory over Liverpool. And yeah, they were heroics. The Spanish international has the worst save percentage, 55.56% of any goalkeeper this season in the Premier League, and he's ranked 127th out of 132 goalkeepers in Europe's top five leagues. That's very poor. We know Kepa's stats are very poor. He has been very poor. Kepa has made an underwhelming 40 saves and 24 appearances in the Premier League. In comparison, Kakir has made 77 saves from 22 appearances. Well, that is mental. Two less appearances and 37 more saves. Different, different league, obviously, but you're still saving shots the ball coming towards your goal. So what do I think about this? Well, obviously he's a very, very highly rated goalkeeper. And if Eddie Newton's feeding back, I mean, how reliable is Newton in terms of goalkeeping, scouting, do you know what I mean? But still, by all accounts, he's very, very highly rated in Turkish football, good age, just used to making a lot of saves. And I think most importantly, above everything else recently, he'd be for a very reasonable price. Bearing in mind Kepa, was not a very reasonable price. I'd take what the uh, president says with a pinch of salt of him being in the top three goalkeepers in the world. So what would that be? All Black, Alisson, 
this guy, Kekir. <laughs> you know, I don't know. There's a bunch of other awesome goalkeepers out there knocking around. And I'm sure we'll have a thing or two to say that are playing at a higher level than the Turkish Super League. Still, highly rated, young, good value for money. Chelsea should probably make a signing like this. If they're not going to replace Kepa and they're going to keep him, maybe the likes of Donnarumma and Onana are like pushed to the side for the moment, saying that we're not going to spend big money on a goalkeeper. We're going to keep Kepa, but we're going to have someone that absolutely can come in as soon as his form dips a little bit. And after, you know, this is Kepa's last season, last chance or whatever. Someone like this Kekir kid, he could be that player. He could come in, play all the cups, maybe even the group stages in the Champions League. And as soon as Kepa has a little slip up, he's in bang between the sticks number one might even keep it and you know superb coverage i guess from chelsea football club certainly a good option to have and it's nice chelsea are looking at all these players that aren't necessarily ridiculous amounts of money so you know this guy be 20 million tellers looks like it'd be just a little bit north of that um, Hakim Ziyech was of course immensely positive business at a very reasonable transfer fee so it's all pretty promising so far and it makes you think hopefully they'll have a big load in the bank to spunk on a massive Galactico winger slash forward or whoever they want to buy so it's interesting but I want to get your thoughts and opinions on all the stuff I've spoken about in this video whether it be the goalkeeping situation whether it's Billy Gilmore versus Jorginho what do you think about that and Oli G would you give him a 12 month extension um, I probably probably would but it's an interesting talking point so get in the comment section below express your thoughts and opinions and if you've enjoyed the content i'd really appreciate you liking the video that would be cool remember to subscribe if you are new to the channel and turn that bell notifications on man follow me on the socials at football yannick all right i'm done you lot enjoy the football and i'll see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me be